welcome everybody uh, and uh your boy stig here and uh, today's my day off and i was just going through some movie lists and i figured you know what let's watch a few movies and let's review it and this is one actually one of my favorite movies denzel is awesome this is the movie flight all credits to paramount obviously and all the actors i am just here looking at this and the reason i wanted to actually review this particular movie not only is it because it's an awesome movie it is actually a really great movie if you haven't if you haven't seen it highly recommend it the reason i want to review this movie is the crash scene itself or the crash event um because there's lots of uh discrepancies that did occur within it and i just want to give you guys a little bit of a standpoint from the maintenance side of it and what the aircraft can and cannot do so Without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this. This is gonna, so this is something new. Ah, let's have some fun with it. All right, the movie Flight. And we'll fast forward through all this and we'll take a look at all the footage. I, obviously, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but I'm gonna try to give you guys as uh, much as information as possible. Oh, rainy days, rainy days are horrible. Nobody likes working in the rain. Not pilots, not mechanics, not ramp, not anybody. It's, it's horrendous being this kind of weather condition is just brutal yeah as you can see here captain whitaker denzel washington is the actor he is doing his walk around and yes uh, either the captain or the first officer will do his walk around and if you've seen the movie he's uh he just got off from a binge of the night before so he's uh trying to get a little air freshener in his uh, mouth there <laughs> or excuse me breath mint or whatever whatever it is just to make it not um, smell like alcohol because that's what he's been doing but um again highly recommend the movie but looks like this aircraft it looks like a almost looks like an md-80 um or maybe a 717 seems like the way it is but it's a looks like a more of a fictitious aircraft but yes so he done done in walk around and uh, by the way maintenance has probably already done the walk around even prior to the pilot being there but here we go yep run up that jet bridge guys oh yeah there it is if i could tell you how many times i have fallen off or slipped on those air stairs oh goodness gracious that hurts you hit your knees like no other. Oh my God, it hurts. It's painful. Be careful going up and down jet bridges. They're, they're slippery. Yep, this is normal. Uh, walking in while uh, passengers are loading. It happens all the time. You know, most of the time you'll see pilots either if walking in or walking out. You'll even see maintenance sometimes. You'll, know, you'll not notice us. Unless you're really paying attention, you'll see either tools on us or our vests that say aircraft maintenance or whatnot. I'm sure they've already done the briefing. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm not a pilot. I'm an aircraft maintenance technician. So a lot of this stuff is pilot stuff. So I'm sure a lot of the pilots will chime in and talk about what's right and not right. Again, I'm just saying all this from a maintenance standpoint. So everything looks like everything is in order everything's going according to uh flight plan or i should say uh, uh going according to business a little conversation a little have they're having fun everybody's good captain gets in and starts his briefing with the first officer oh yeah absolutely cup of coffee it's a lifeline Here's a funny one for you guys. Anybody that ever sits there and says, oh, I don't drink airplane coffee, believe it or not, 90% of, or at least, I don't know, 90%, maybe uh, the percentages is just my speculation, but um, yeah, it's, um, they drink, everybody drinks airplane coffee, especially the flight crew. We, they all drink airplane coffee. So <laughs> that whole notion of nobody drinks the airplane coffee. Yeah, yes, they do. A aircraft workers aviation industry personnel we live on aircraft coffee pilots flight attendants mechanics we all do so yeah it's good to go i might fast forward for a few of these so now, from what i understand most pilots don't uh actually they, they fly with different flight crew all the time so they, they hardly ever see the same people all the time 
Oxygen check. Oxygen check. Oh, this is an important one. Uh, prior to doing this, we as aircraft maintenance, we make sure that oxygen is full and ready. There are minimum dispatch limits for oxygen. So what the captain is doing there right there, that is correct procedure. Obviously, he's doing for other reasons. He, a little bit of a hit of oxygen that clears your head. That is 100% oxygen and almost moisture. Yeah, actually, it is moisture free. So it gives you a nice little head rush and... Um, clears your mind so yeah but yes oh yeah there is minimum dispatch limits for oxygen and it's also dependent on how many people are actually in the flight deck itself so uh, if there's more than let's say if there's somebody there's an observer uh, the oxygen limits have to come up there has to be more oxygen because remember observer seat or the observer that's sitting behind them whether on, on any aircraft uh, they also have oxygen masks so uh, but if it's just two pilots and uh, there's nobody observing the the limits actually drop down a lot lower uh, for example uh, in uh, on a 737 you could actually have the oxygen as low as 900 psi but when it comes down to let's say etops flights you know extended operations flights minimum standard for that is uh, 1350 you know 1350 psi that is minimum it cannot be below that so we would if we see anything below that on an etops flight it has to be serviced no if ands buts about it but yeah oxygen very important and what he's doing there is uh, an ops check he, which all pilots do they can either choose to operational check you know breathe in the oxygen or there's a button on the oxygen uh, panel where they can press and they know they have a, a positive flow of oxygen so yep there you go Let's see. I saw everything's going according to plan here. Nice big whiff of oxygen. Okay. You want to hit? <laughs> you want to hit? Yes, sir. You look so confused. You look so confused. Uh, lots of new pilots coming in and out of uh, the airlines, and that's that first officer. That's exactly what it looks like. Like a new new pilot that probably just came out of a. A regional, or maybe this is a regional. Uh, how would I know? Let's go. Thirteen fifty. Is it? Oh, all right. Let's go. No maintenance issues. Let's go. Get the comb right and push out. I'm gonna fast forward to this, and we're gonna get to the flight portion of it. He said, "How you feeling?" I know exactly how he's feeling. Let's see. Oh, not that part. All right. Let's go from here. Flight attendants, take your seats. All is normal. It this does look like a. Uh, this does look like a um, seven one seven or MD eighty. Now, this is all pilot stuff, so pilots, go ahead, feel free to comment on what you see here. Bad weather, this is some bad weather. Now, this is normal. I mean, I've been in some bad weather as a passenger and I was also as a flight mechanic as well. So sitting in the observer seat watching this, it's pretty hairy. I mean, but pilots know what they're doing. Uh, full confidence, not only within the abilities of the pilots, but as well as full confidence in the aircraft itself. So, and modern day aircraft. So as long as there's no uh, incidents, there's no malfunction, which obviously the, there is gonna be a malfunction because it's a movie, so. Yeah, it, it, but this is normal, and most people are scared to fly because of this kind of stuff. Trust me, pilots will not take an airplane flying in bad weather conditions, extremely bad weather conditions. They'll ground the airplane, so let's go. That's a bit unusual. Usually, they'll let the autopilot do its job. I mean... Uh, from what I understand, and pilots correct me if I'm wrong, uh, majority of the actual flying, you know, stick and rudder uh, flying happens 
I don't take off, obviously, and I think, what is it? If I remember correctly, anything above 100 feet off the ground, autopilot engages, or you can engage the autopilot and they just tune, to, tune it in and what they need to do. I might be wrong on this one. Again, I'm not a pilot. This is just why I'm going off of what I've read. And uh, on landing, I believe it's anything between uh, 100 or 200 feet. They start flying or you know they actually grab a hold of controls again don't quote me on this i am not a pilot i'm just speculating i'm guessing so correct me throw it down in the comments i'd love to hear it i mean it's always fascinating even the times i had did spend in the flight deck that i was just an observer i don't talk because i don't dis disrupt to pilots especially in critical moments of flight landing takeoff and whatnot so yeah uh, the Fox, it is a subject 227. We got some rough chop. I say moderate. <laughs> I'd say severe turbulence. Definitely severe. On this note, the turbulence. Everybody always gets nervous about turbulence. And, you know, it's it's a bumpy ride sometimes. Guys, there has never been in history an airplane coming down because of turbulence, ever. Okay? There has been because of mechanical malfunction, pilot error, uh, wind shear. You know, severe air pockets, yes, that has happened, but from turbulence alone, no, an airplane has never gone down from turbulence. Yes, it's a bumpy, uncomfortable thing to go through, but the aircraft can handle it. The aircraft are designed to take that punishment. So when everybody always asks, what about turbulence? No, it's okay, the airplane can take it. It will take the punishment. So don't worry, let's go. No meal service today. No. He's trying to find that clear sky. Now this is some cowboy piloting. I mean, technically it is for weather. I mean, I, I don't know why he had to say that. Obviously it's for weather. Yeah, that's one thing pilots don't do. They don't lie to ATC. That doesn't want to. Obviously, they don't lie to ATC. They they want to give them the most accurate data. Remember, you are flying in low visibility or no visibility conditions, and uh, you have yes, you do have TCAS. You no, know, uh, and that's basically your uh, GPS to other aircraft. You, you know, uh, it tells you if it talks to other aircraft and the other aircraft talk to you. Um, it's basically prevents airplanes hitting from each other. So if you start giving people wrong altitude information, yeah, it's that's not a good thing to do. <laughs> so. Uh, departure, we're leaving at 9,000 for flight level 180. Approaching our maximum airspeed. Damn yeah, right, we need to speed to punch through this crap. This work with me. No overspeeding, sir. Now, overspeeding is very, very crucial. I mean, pilots know about this as well, but for a maintenance standpoint, overspeeding, you're putting the airframe and the nacelles, or the engine nacelles, or the pylons, in an extreme stress environment. You can't do that. I mean, it's you can in a limited amount, but you're going to start getting damage at that point i mean you're approaching maximum speed limits the airframe can only take so much so yeah uh, pilots don't usually try to do that unless it's a dire emergency trying to get out of this shitty air that's all right with you departure this is south jet 227 we're experiencing some rough air encountering some severe downdrafts we're in our flight now see i i don't know this is i've never seen this like 
uh, you always have somebody that's flying and uh, somebody else that's always on a communication. You wouldn't see somebody communicating and flying at the same time. Um, he would communicate to the first officer. The first officer would communicate to, you know, radio. But that's just what I've seen. I, I mean, it might be different nowadays. Now. A pilot that knows his aircraft and knows the limitations and sometimes you can push the envelope on certain things uh, yeah I mean if if you have if you're a pilot and you know the limits of your aircraft and you can ride the edge of it yeah you, you can it's your prerogative pilots prerogative That's interesting. Uh, on takeoff, well, never mind. He's already taken off, so he might have throttled back. But uh, usually on takeoff, you're a, you're a toga. You know, takeoff, go around. But he might have throttled back, and then he's going full power now. So right back into toga. Oh, he's climbing now. What is he? I don't know. There he is. And success! He made it. He made it out of that messy soup. I got that silver. There you go. All right, now let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to the actual event. Let's see. So Captain Whitaker here, he took a little nap. And now... How could anybody sleep like that? How could anybody sleep? Easy! Easy! Oh. Aviation where we can we'll sleep standing up with our eyes open probably at that point. We're going to start descending any second now. Well, it looks like we'll need to wake him up. Southjet 227, allow the center to send and maintain flight level 300. Center maintain flight level 300, Southjet 227. Oh, okay. Immediately, right there. Immediately, right there. What do you notice? The yoke. The yoke completely goes full nose down. Now, I'm gonna remind you guys of another incident before we start going on through this. Obviously, everybody knows about Alaska 261, right? This is very similar. This is very, very similar, but more exaggerated, obviously, and you know, it's a movie. Um, but the events that took place in, in real life uh, very much mimic what's happening here. Um, let's go, let's watch it. Oh, oh yeah. What is that? The elevator feels really stiff, sir. All right, let's force. Okay, so right. elevator is what gives you your pitch, okay? Aircraft goes up and down via the elevator. The elevator is attached to the horizontal stabilizer. The horizontal stabilizer gives you the trim for pitch, okay? So up and down, and then you can adjust the pitch by trimming it with the horizontal stabilizer. All right, let's go. Come on, we can get everybody strapped in. Get everybody strapped in tight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going left hard, sir. They're fighting those controls. They're definitely fighting those controls. Something's wrong. And again, this is why I mentioned back, uh, this is uh, more of a MD-80 717 or DC-9 style aircraft. Uh, this, I mean, the flight deck, the way it's configured, and obviously the um, yoke being pushed down like that, it doesn't happen in a fly-by-wire aircraft. Uh, I mean, you'll get artificial feel, uh, not in an Airbus. Airbus, you won't know it because you have a side stick, unless you're flying an A300 or an A310. But this is a cable-driven aircraft. It's more of like a 737, if anybody, you know, I've talked about this before. Fly by vi or fly by wire versus um, uh, direct control, which is cable. So they're going nose down. Right. Okay, throttle back. So why does he do that? He throttle back because he wants to lose airspeed. Now he wants to slow down because going nose down first and having your engines at cruise or where whatever the setting is. Yeah, he wants to now. He wants to get them down to idle at least or at most, I should say, because he wants to reduce his airspeed as much as possible and 
reduce his uh, descent speed. He wants time. He's he's, he's buying time. So uh, he's at flight level th uh, thirty thousand. Okay, for my passengers, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Don't don't freak out. Like I, like I said, this is a movie. And it's a lot of this is fictitious, but there's a lot of it is also a, a safety uh, mentioning factor. Guys, when you're in your seat, keep your seatbelt on. Just keep it on. Even if you are not gonna go anywhere, you're not gonna do anything, you're sitting around watching a movie or even sleeping, keep your seatbelt on. You know, it, it's just, it helps. Just in case of turbulence or whatever, or even something like this. I have no control on my side. No control at all, sir. We lost hydraulics. Sir, this is Subject 227. We lost our hydraulics and it feels like our pitch control. Okay, he says he lost his hydraulics. Uh, his engines are still running. And uh, I'm sure he's got electric pumps as backups. He has not lost his hydraulics. Uh, what he did, he's lost his flight control for his pitch attitude. His hydraulics are still working because he can still maneuver the aircraft. Is any other access? He can yaw. He can roll. The only thing he can't do is pitch. So, yeah, he he still he still got hydraulics. As long as those engines are running, he's got hydraulics, and he's got electric backups. Backup, the backup pumps. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna call him out on this one. Yeah, your engines are running, buddy. You don't need backup pumps. Oh my god, not at that speed. Not at that speed. It will rip everything apart. You can't do that to an airplane. Yeah, the gear will deploy hydraulic. By the way, again, a proof of hydraulics are still working. He just deployed the gear. Yeah, that means hydraulics are working. But deploying gear and speed brakes at that speed, uh, flaps at that speed, you're going to rip the airplane to pieces. You, no, that, that, that's... No, this is not right. It's wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you might be able to drop the flaps just a bit, maybe one degree or five degrees, but not, I don't even know if you can do that at this kind of speed when you're, you're reaching your maximum uh, allowable speeds or even exceeding them. You're just going to damage the airframe. But yeah, pilots, uh, chime in on this one. Bye-bye wheel well door. Ah, uh, FO. FO is a smart one. See that? He said the hydraulics is not the problem. He automatically realized it. Do it. Okay, dumping fuel is normal. The, the, this is called jettisoning fuel, okay? Uh, he is trying to reduce his weight. So, uh, he's in an emergency. He's got fuel. He wants to lighten his load so he can maneuver the aircraft better as also is getting ready for landing. So if he's got too much fuel on board, yeah, he's gonna dump that fuel. Uh, again, this is called jettisoning, jettisoning fuel. Everybody remembers that Delta incident, right? And everybody complained about it so much. Yeah, I, yeah, well, I know it dumped over land. Majority of time, 99% of the time, they will jettison fuel over water. But in case of an emergency where well, they have to jettison, they will jettison the fuel anywhere they need to do. And that Delta flight, yeah, they jettisoned over land. Fortunately, there was some, you know, it was somewhat of a low altitude, but everybody went up into an uproar thinking jet fuel is going to cause harm. It's, it's not. It's fine. You know what? The safety of those people on board and what those pilots did was the right thing to do. My two cents on that. All right. Just do it. Do it. 30 degrees. 
30 degrees at that speed? Oh man, all right. Okay, let's go, it's a movie. Okay, so I'm assu I am assuming what he did is when he pulled that lever and pulled it, pushed it back down, he is basically when he said reverting to manual control. He before he was relying on his hydraulics. Okay, again. Um, Let's take an example of the 737, right? The 737 is cable driven, but hydraulically assisted. Now, once again, I'm not sure why he's doing that, why he's reverting to manual control. You know you have hydraulics. Your hydraulics are working just fine. But reverting to pure cable, that's just going to make life even more difficult. So, but, you know, it's a movie once again, so... Well, what he's doing there, this is my assumption, is cutting off the hydraulics to that particular system or certain systems and going to straight cable-driven control where he has direct control now. There's no more hydraulically assisted portions of this. Now, they're, now they have to muscle it, muscle those yokes, and yeah, nobody wants to do that. Nothing, no control. No control. How you have no control? You had hydraulics a second ago. There have been times where crew, uh, cabin crew was called in to get assistance. So you know, this is this is plausible. I you know it's it, it's something that could happen. If there was a mechanic on board or if there was even a pilot on board, uh, they would say something. They, I mean, most likely if there was something happening, most people that are in the industry will volunteer to help. And uh, such as the incident in Sioux City, uh, Sioux City Iowa, uh, the United flight, there was a pilot on board that came up that assisted. So yeah, it, it's plausible. Let me fast forward through this one here. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We passed a good spot. We went a little too far. They're coming down real low. Okay, in that regards of the flight 261, this actually did happen. Watch this. He's going inverted. He's going to go upside down because he realizes that his pitch uh, mechanism, his either his elevators or his horizontal stabilizer, is no longer working. They have no other choice. So in his mind is, well, if we can only go down, if we flip the aircraft, then guess what? You're going to go back up. But it's, you can only do it a very, very limited amount of time. The wing is not built like that. The, the, air, the, the airfoil of the wing, I should say, is just not built like that. You can fly it for a very limited amount of, limited amount of time, but not for a sustained amount. Um, you would need power, basically. And this is what happens right here. He adds the power. Oh, I gotta do something to stop this guy. Trevor. Trevor. Say, 
Yes, the black box, uh, commonly known as the black black box, but in reality, the box is actually bright bright orange, and it's called the CVR, the cockpit voice recorder, and it is recording. So yes, this is normal. If there is something to say, and if you guys ever heard of the last moments of certain flights that were just doomed, there are some very chilling um, conversations and very chilling uh, words and that come out in those very last moments. And um, it's very difficult to listen to. Uh, we as professionals, we have to. We have to know when we study these kind of things. But, you know, it is what it is. But that's why it's there for the cockpit voice recorders are there in case an investigation is needed to occur. They want to know what, what's actually happening within the flight deck, the communication between the pilots. So, yeah, uh, there's also a uh, flight data recorder, which basically records everything that's happening with the aircraft physically, all the parameters, all the flight controls, what's happening with the engines. All those things are being recorded. All right. So why is he why is he telling him to go full power? Because that's literally the only thing that's going to keep that airplane flying. Remember what I told you about um, the the wings and the airfoil? It's not meant to fly upside down. I mean, but you give enough power, it can for a very limited amount of time. So this is why she this is why the captain says full power. Gear up. gear up because he wants to reduce the drag at this point. Imagine seeing something like that flying over your head. That's that is just scary. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, that this that is scary. So he's li he's literally trying now he's trying to do the opposite. He instead of pulling up, he's pulling down. Okay, so what happens when an airplane is inverted? Okay, I'm going to give you guys an example. So aircraft are not meant to be inverted. These are not jet fighters, okay? Jet fighters can do this because they have positive and negative pumps and they're able to keep on feeding fuel to those engines no matter what because that's what jet fighters do they can fly upside down they can do all sorts of fun stuff commercial aircraft cannot okay it's dependent on gravity that's how they're built so when an aircraft is upside down like this guess what now you're starving your engines of fuel because the pumps are at the lower lowest portion of the wing the, all the fuel is now on the top portion of the wing. You're not getting any more fuel. That's it. Now your engines are about to go dry because you're flying upside down and there's no more fuel being fed. Matter of fact, he actually dumped fuel, so he has even less fuel. So, yeah. You can imagine what happens next. We are inverted. Same thing with oil pressure. Same thing with the oil pressure. Oil tanks are meant to be downforce, gravity. It goes through the system. If you're upside down, that oil is now on the other side and all those components are not being properly lubricated. So now you're getting low oil pressure. It's the same concept if, you're, if your car was upside down. You can't drive your car upside down. Make sense? Uh oh, fire. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure. Well, the engine is overheating. That's what's happening right here. The engine is overheating. 
And I'm not sure if there's a fire yet. There might be. Uh, that's why that is, that maybe that one came on. That's that's your T handle. That's how pilots put out uh, fire in an engine. There's um, temperatures. Excuse me. Uh, they call them. It's called a fire loop system. It's basically probes running through certain portions of the engine. The fan cowl, the core, which runs up into the pylon, and the hot section. Uh, basically, the, the, there's something hot that's happening, and these, these probes are picking up the sensors. The sensors are picking up that there's overheat temperature that's happening, and they'll throw up the fire warning. So this is what's going to happen right here. Put it out. Okay, so apparently from here, okay, the, the engine was on fire, so he says put it out. Okay, well, as soon as he pulled that T-handle, the fire handle, in Airbus they call them push buttons, but as soon as he pulls that, there's five things that happened. First, fuel gets cut off. Two, hydraulics gets cut off. Three, electrical gets cut off. Four, uh, air, any kind of pneumatic source gets cut off. And five, your fire bottles get armed, okay? Now he would have to either press a button or turn that handle to, to, to actually extinguish the flames. And that will uh, put out the Halon 1301 or whatever kind of system they're using and it will extinguish the flames within that engine. Which looks like he did. By the way, as soon as you do that, once you, you can pull a T-handle and not extinguish the flame, not, you know, not push the button or turn the handle to extinguish, you know, activate those bottles. You can re-engage that T-handle. Most likely you can have a functional engine, but as soon as you turn that handle or push the button and extinguish the flames inside that engine, that's it. You're not starting it again, it's over. Atlanta Southland 227, where's that airport? 227 is one block, three miles. All right, we're not going to make that. Our engines are running up. I see a field and a road ahead of us. We're going to set it down there. Roger, 227. Oh, no, fire the right now! We're coming back around. So he basically lost both of his engines. He's an upside-down glider. Margaret, I want you to hit full power, full throttle. Okay, what? <laughs> All righty. So uh, uh, once again, once you pull those T-handles, that's it. The engine is off. It just shut down. There's no fuel going to it at all. So when he says go full power, I'm like, wait, what? Stand. Here we go. Evans, speed brakes. Speed brakes. Flaps full. Sorry about that. You know, it's graphic, but it is what it is. Losing the left engine? You already lost the left engine, bro. That gun, that engine was gone a long time ago. <laughs> you lost it when you pulled that T handle. This is comedy. Sorry. Full power. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. That there is no power. Movie magic. We lost the left engine. We're losing power on the right. We lost the power. Oh, oh, oh. He must have his APU running. He must have, because he still got full power to all of his instruments, literally. All of his instruments are still there and functioning. He must have had his APU running, but they didn't say anything about it. So I'm just gonna assume that he does. But yeah, um, let's go, let's see what happens. <laughs> Lots of cautions, warnings, engine fail, altitude, yeah. Are we when uh, when your both engines fail and you don't have APU running, 
or you're on the RAT, the Ram Air Turbine, you will get very minimal power and you will get very minimal information on those, on those screens. Uh, you're basically flying that aircraft on very, very basic knowledge. Um, just information like compass, just directional radios, uh, maybe a light or two. That's about it. You don't, you're not going to get anything else. Not all that cluster. Down low, terrain. Down low, terrain. Fly. It's the fly. Down low, terrain. Uh, again, uh, this is a direct control aircraft, so he's still able to do... No, the thing is, he can't. He can't do that. If the, if the event occurred, that, that level of catastrophic event occurred for his pitch control him spinning that wheel and that's the pitch control wheel yeah that's not going to do anything he, he's literally not doing anything i don't know what he's spinning that 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 controls the horizontal stabilizer pitch so if that's the case then what happened if his elevators failed yeah that he could have just not used hydraulics i guess but him spinning that wheel is pointless because <laughs> he lost it in the first place. That's the whole point. That concludes that well i hope you guys uh <laughs> enjoyed this uh yeah it's uh it's an interesting movie it's a it's a little bit unrealistic on certain things but um it's still a fun movie to watch and you get to see how some of the aircraft uh functions properly and majority of it is a bit of a movie magic and liberties within aviation i'm curious now who was their aviation consultant because uh uh, I'd like to have a few words with that person. <laughs> but anyway, it's a movie. Hope you guys had fun. Uh, I know it's a bit of a different content from what I'm doing usually, but yeah, have fun. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, talk about it. Let's have a discussion. All right. See you guys.